Greetings! In today's video, I'm taking a look at another upgrade box. I got this one a little while back and it's a box featuring watercolor supplies. The featured artist for this one is Tantani. I'll have the links below to their Instagram so you can check them out. As usual, we get a nice print and a small sticker sheet with the box featuring their art. We also get the usual upgrade companion booklet. The first item is in the stack with the print and the booklet. It's three small sheets of Saunders Waterford watercolor paper in cold press. I know my friend Otto really loves this paper, so I'm super excited to try it out. The second item I took out was a bottle of Windsor & Newton drawing ink. The colors were chosen at random and I ended up getting a jar of green ink, emerald. Then we have two half pans of Van Gogh watercolor paint. I got a pan of Gamboge and one of Quinacridone purple red. The Gamboge is a mix of pigments PY154 and PO48. The quinacridone purple is PV55. Like with the ink, I think these colors would vary from one box to the other, but everyone got a yellow and a red purple. The next item is a water tank brush. I've not used one like this before. It seems to have a piston filling system. Apparently, you can just put the tip down in water and pull up the piston to fill it without having to get up and go to the sink. Then we have a regular paintbrush from Leonard or Leonard. It's called La Vie Fauve and it's a size zero. It's shaped a bit like a mop brush and is made with synthetic fibers. Last but not least, we get a nice dot card featuring handmade watercolor paints from Scrim, a small German company. There are two larger dots of regular watercolor and five smaller dots of shimmery paints. So that's it for the supplies included in this box. As with previous boxes, the booklet is a very interesting read and is full of great info and good inspiration. I started by swatching the paints and the ink. It makes for a bit of an odd selection, to be honest. It can be worked, but it's also a bit limited. The orange and the blue can make for an interesting muted or neutral color, and the scrim watercolor and the Van Gogh watercolor mixed well together. The one thing that works slightly less well with the rest is the drawing ink. Regular watercolor is made with gum arabic, but this drawing ink is shellac based and it can affect the texture of the paint on the paper. Shellac is a different binder and it's also one that cannot be rewet. So that's why there's a bit of a conflict with the gum arabic in the watercolors. On their own, the Windsor Newton drawing inks are not to be mixed with tap water as it will ruin the ink it's gonna get all clumpy and unusable. Before I figured out that you have to use distilled water with these, I once tried to dilute the ink in a jar and added tap water and it became unusable. Like it separates, you end up with flakes of pigment and clear liquid. So I know distilled water is what should be used with these, but I decided to use tap water anyway for my demo paintings to test it out. Also, any color made with some of the ink in it is not gonna be rewettable once it's dry. I tried it because it was there on my palette and it just makes for a clumpy color that doesn't reconstitute properly. I also want to talk about the brushes. Now the Leonard or Leonard brush has become my current favorite. I keep saying Leonard because it's a French company. The brush keeps a really nice point and it's the perfect balance of soft versus springy for me. I know it's a bit of a larger brush, but it's also very easy to use for smaller areas too. It holds water and paints super well. Like it's not dumping all the water or all the pigment all at once. As I always do with items I really like, I did some research to figure out how accessible this brush is to me here in Canada. Sadly, it's quite inaccessible. <laughs> It seems to be much easier to find in France. Of course, I'll keep an eye out for it, but knowing that I can't easily replace it is gonna bother me. I love the Leonard brush so much that I initially completely forgot about the water tank brush. I'm not sure why we would need both brushes at once. If you have a regular brush and a jar of water, why would you need a water tank brush at the same time and the other way around? Now, I'm not a great user of water brushes. I just can't figure it out doesn't work for me. So I was thinking about how I could use this water brush, but perhaps a bit differently. And this is what I came up with. I think it might be a good tool to wet an area before dropping paint in, so as to create special effects, like have the paint spread out in the wet area. 
I tried it with the paints included in the box, but it was not very impressive. It seems these paints and the ink I got, they don't really travel in water. The paint just slowly spread out, but it didn't make for any kind of special effect. I will definitely try with some of my other paints in the future. The handmade watercolor from Scrim are nice. I love the two regular colors, Pacific Blue and Deep Orange. No pigment info is provided. The closest I could find is that Scrim has a similar orange and blue on their website, Pyrrol Orange with the pigment PO73 and Phthalo Blue with the pigment PB15, column 3. The shimmery colors are Cosmic Wave, Raw Gold, Moondust, Osiris Red and Atlantis. I couldn't find pigment info on these either. On their website, Scrim mentioned that their paints are generally vegan, but no more details are given. Once I was done with all the swatching and testing, I painted three illustrations on the provided paper. This time, I made a series of three adventurer cats. I had to use some supplies not included in the box to draw my cats, so I used colored lead in a mechanical pencil, an eraser, and a Pentel brush pen. Before drawing on the paper, I tried to find the paper's right side and couldn't figure it out with full certainty. There's a difference of texture between both sides of the paper, but they both look like they can be used. I asked Otto about this and she told me that she's used this paper on both sides and that they both worked out well. I didn't encounter any particular issues while using the paints on the paper. I was a bit annoyed at the dot card. As you can see, the orange and the blue dots touch which means that the colors contaminate each other when I add water to one of the dots. They are too well glued in place, I wasn't able to take them off. Overall, the paints mixed well and layered well too. The green ink mixed in with the watercolor didn't make too much of a mess. With keeping in mind that dried paint on the palette is not gonna re-wet well, I was able to get the effects I wanted and use up the paint I needed before it dried out. So what did I think of this box? I liked it. My absolute favorite is the Leonel brush. What a beautiful, perfectly crafted brush, according to my needs anyway. I will definitely keep on using it and hopefully I'll stay as happy with it as I am now. I also really love the paper. If it was more readily available to me, I would definitely use it regularly. Unfortunately, like the brush, Saunders and Waterford paper is not the easiest to find around here. The other supplies were good, but nothing that I'll personally seek out once I'm done with these. So what do you think of these items? Is there anything here that speaks to you more than the rest? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to Upgrade for sending me this box and thank you for watching this video. Take care, bye bye.